Hey guys, my name is Drain, and I'm working on a new manga! Yippee! Starting the process all over again after my last project, Penumbra. Last time, I had somebody handling the story, but this time around, the story is all on me. But I do at least have help with some people acting as an editor for me, so they can tell me stuff like, Dude, I don't even- I don't even know what this is. What, you- you wrote this? This looks like- this looks like ass, dude. I- could you make it better? And then I say, okay! Starting all over again means I have to freshen up on all the things that I've learned from making tons of comics in the past. Mainly story stuff because that's the most important thing, not so much the art. And that's a bonus tip for any of you beginners. That's a very cool tip, that's a very prestigious tip for me, exclusively. So I thought to share some tips if you're starting out, or even if you're making manga right now. These tips are ones I picked up through experience and researching over the years, so I hope they're helpful. So without further ado, let's start. Tip number one, say it with me now, ready? Oh brother, this guy stinks! Oh, okay. Relatability! Whether it be through feelings, actions, scenarios, or events, relatability can seriously make readers connect with your work. I'll give you an example at how strong relatability can be. In a cold, dark, desolate fantasy world, there's a knight who regularly goes out on his shift to go slay demons around the city. Take this, you foul beast. hey -ya! It's a hard day's work, but he knows when he goes back to the city, he'll be treated right and he'll have some food to eat. The knight goes back to the city, buys some meat on his way back, and goes home to cook it. A few sizzles later, it's done and it smells great. Oh, it smells so good and fucking tasty, dude. After a long eight hour journey, he can finally sit down and eat some delicious food. Oh, I'm gonna season this with like salt, pepper, man, I'll even put some cheese on this from the local farm. Uh, oh shit! <coughs> He's mentally defeated. Uh, the food. It's dropped. It's no. everywhere. On oh the dirty God. fucking ground. It slipped and I fell. The knight looks up almost in a refusal to look down. The reality that he just dropped the meal he'd been waiting for after a long day's work is awaiting him. No. Oh my. Ugh, no. Watching someone go through the scenario is a lot like someone just talking to you and saying, Hey man, you ever accidentally dropped some really good food you bought? Even for a second, you remember when that did happen to you and how you felt. This is all to say that no matter the setting, time, or place, relatability can find its way in your story. Even if it's not much, it stays memorable to the person reading it at least for the chapter it's from. It can even be something as little as that one scene from One Punch Man where he struggles to catch a fly. Or it can be something even more insignificant like a character stubbing their toe. In some other cases though, it gets really impactful when you start factoring in strong emotions. An easy one is the feeling of losing. In a lot of sports mangas like Haikyuu, the main character obviously has a knack for the sport in question and goes on a winning streak, but the moment they lose, it is crushing. Anybody who competes in tournaments can instantly relate at that feeling. They remember all their hard work training for this tournament and feel instantly deflated. This example is of course easier to get relatability off of because of the nature of sports, but it can be translated to some other genres as well. Though, I'm not gonna list them because because I lack a mega mind sized brain right now to be able to do that. Relatability can be what drives your theme. A generic one is simply the theme of never giving up. Seeing a character go through hardships that are difficult to even imagine can inspire people reading it to never give up despite what life throws at them. This is just something I thought of from the top of my head, but you get it. Following up on the last tip, this one naturally comes next. Putting your soul into the story to make it come alive. Or in other words, taking aspects of your own life and translating them into your manga. This is such an important thing that I feel like I don't see too often in beginner work. Because if you don't do this or add any kind of aspect of reality, it's harder for the reader to connect with your work past the surface level. Even something as little as a character's personality that appears familiar to someone they've met before. This even translates beyond characters. For example, if a manga setting takes place in in a real part of the world or a fictional setting heavily inspired by that part of the world, a mangaka would want to capture the essence of that location so the reader feels like they're in that world alongside the characters. 
This is why many famous mangakas have often traveled to places in order to fully capture what they want in their manga. For example, the mangaka of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Hirohiko Araki. When it comes to this, he is a pro. According to the book, Manga in Theory and Practice by Araki, he spoke on how he made it a habit to visit the locations that his manga took place in whenever he could. So for part 3, he visited Egypt three times, and he learned a lot about the culture just by experiencing it for himself. And I mean, we see that because this dude got haggled in Egypt and said, hmm, you know what? You're going in my manga. He did this again for part 5 by visiting Rome, except extensively studying the city and architecture in order to faithfully capture it in his manga. So much so, in this book, he says, hey, I think if you go to Italy, you'll think, hmm, that looks like part 5. Now, I'm not saying to go into depth flying to every which way your manga goes in. That'd be crazy. The main point to get from this is that first-hand experience will have an edge over online research. Yeah. That's not to say online research is bad, rather you should combine both of these so that you add more life to the world you're trying to make. This is also generally why most mangas take place in Japan because, you know, most mangakas live in Japan, so they just go outside and live life for their work. This is why my personal advice is when you're starting out, choose a location you're familiar with, and even better, if you're immersed in the culture. Just like how a lot of mangakas share Japanese culture through their work. In some cases, it can even be your manga's X factor. Like, oh, this manga takes place in a place I've never been to, but it's so detailed on like their culture and what they do that it's really interesting to learn. Wow, it's that easy? <laughs> I'm gonna go outside right now and capture the essence of my country in my comic! Let's go! Never mind, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna make up some fantasy land or something. Priorities and the importance of establishing. I've said this tip before in a previous video, but it doesn't hurt to say it again, as it's good to keep in mind. In my last video, I said that when I make manga, I go in this order plot and theme, characters, and then the world building. This isn't an, an all-encompassing rule, this is just what I do to create a strong foundation, which is the main idea behind this tip. Now I know when we're all watching our favorite anime or manga with a deep and interesting world, you can often feel inspired to make your own, and that's totally normal and okay. And don't throw away that ambition if it's still something you want to do, because you can do it. We'll all have our One Piece world someday. But when you're making rice, you need water and heat. Like, rice is fucking awesome, I love rice, but you can't make it without the foundation that brings it to life. Sorry, I just like eating rice. I'm, I'm really craving rice right now. What I'm trying to say is focus on the plot at hand, then your characters. As your characters grow, the world around them grows, and often it gets easier to create a world based on who your characters are. Like, how did this character become like this? And from there, you can talk about the kind of environment they grew up in, which is world building, yay! World building is fun, but it is definitely the thing that takes the longest to do, and sometimes it's never ending, like a certain anime. We all love One Piece on this channel, don't worry. There's a belief that a manga can still be good as long as it has an interesting character. That characters make the manga, meaning if the character is so good and interesting, they can straight up just be in a void of a world. Yes! I'm talking empty open world games, I'm talking the amount of white space in between panels on a webtoon, and even the one house from Courage the Cowardly Dog. The character can be so interesting that people will not care about the environment, rather they're just there to see more of the character and what choices they make. Characters can carry the whole franchise on their back sometimes, so world building can definitely wait. Start small. This also ties into the last tip. Creating a manga is a lot of work, and sometimes so much work that it's easy to put off for a long time, to the point where it's not even happening, for months, years, or ever. Which is why, if you're starting your first manga ever, your wee little comic, start small and basic. It doesn't need to shatter the manga leaderboards, it doesn't need to be this huge grand thing that you drip tease all over your Twitter, no. It can simply just be something basic, but interesting. And who knows, it may garner some attraction anyhow, but you won't know that until you put it out there. 
Putting your work out there as a complete product allows you and others to read it, which, erm, um, obviously. It means you can see what to improve on more easily. Whereas if I showed you 50 work in progress pages, you'd say, oh, um, that looks cool. I don't really know what I'm looking at, but uh, that looks cool, I think. It's okay to take time working on your first manga, however long it takes is fine, but it's time for my opinion. That's right, an opinion. In my opinion, I think you should get something out ASAP and not take a whole year on it. Back when I was first getting into manga, I set a goal for myself to create a chapter once a month. Now mind you, I wasn't perfect at it, sometimes I'd make a short chapter of like 5 pages, but I aimed to just get something done after procrastinating so much. Because of that, I ended up making about 107 pages of this manga that I made mostly for myself to get better. If you're wondering what it was about, it was about the slapping sport. Cause at the time it was really starting to make waves and I thought wow that sounds really stupid but I wonder what it'd be like as a shonen so I just did it. I didn't bank on it getting me anywhere, I didn't make it for anybody, it was purely just to release something that can be read and consumed like a manga even if it wasn't completed. I've seen many people aspire to make a manga and it takes a long time which is fine. Like it's normal for these things to take a long time. But my point is when you're first starting out with none to some mangas under your belt your main goal should be to create something like a one shot and get them out there while also not taking a crazy long time on one singular project. Even if the pages are small or have little panels or even if it starts out as a novel, something is better than nothing. Lastly, have fun. Whee! There's inevitably going to be a lot of duds along the way, so just have fun with it. Whether it's your career or a hobby, if you're stressing out over making this stuff, it's going to feel more like a shitty job than something fun. Especially if you're not getting paid, like what the fuck dude, what are you doing? The amount of absolute unintelligible goopy poopy bottom of the shoe mangas I've made is astronomical, but every single story I made I was invested in, at least while I was making it. I would think about them all the time and all the interesting scenarios that happened in them and drew a lot of art for it. When nobody else was a fan of my work, I was the fan. When you're first starting out, it's normal to think, ooh, what if this pops off? Ooh, this looks really good. Ooh, kill him. Ooh. But after a while, I was more interested in creating something that I liked myself, so that even if nobody liked it, at least I did, and I had fun making it. Because of that, I've actually been able to improve without feeling like I suffered along the way. I believe pumping out comics will make you improve as an artist because it combines so many different types of skills needed for it. You've got storyboarding, writing, graphic design, backgrounds, world building, character concepting, and probably more. Even if you're not confident in your art, you can still produce something with your writing in tandem. I believe the biggest and most inspirational person for this specific scenario is One, the guy who is behind One Punch Man and Mob Psycho. To fill you in, One was a guy that wasn't very good at art but was good at writing. So he made a manga anyway despite not being a very good artist at the time. Because usually most mangakas are an artist first, writer second. He never gave up though. Even after having a legendary mangaka redraw all of One Punch Man because now he's actually developed his own art style for the manga Mob Psycho, which many people, including myself, really love. So what I'm saying is, even if you suck ass, don't give up. I mean, I kinda sucked ass at the start, not gonna lie. My art was so bad in high school, I don't even know how I did a lot of things I did. But I improved, so yay, victory! Ha <laughs> Let's fucking go! Yes! So, to round up all these tips, make your work relatable, Put some life into your work, prioritize establishing the foundation being your plot and characters first, start small when first beginning, and have fun making a bunch of comics! If you found this helpful at all or simply enjoyed watching, I would appreciate the like and sub! I like internet points! Yay! And for now, I'm gonna get back to making this manga. So I'll see you later. Bye bye! Bye bye! Bye bye! Bye bye! bye, 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 bye.